good day good day grade 12s with we'll meet again and um, uh, it's been a while uh, this is our very uh, uh, one of our newest videos in the series um, so I'm going to be helping you today with uh, vertical projectile motion um, just remember uh, to subscribe to our channel uh, and also just remember if you have any questions that you want uh, to direct to me you can uh, hit me up on my email address, that's mlungesi.m.ngosi at gmail.com. That's M-L-U-N-G-I-S-I dot M dot N-K-O-S-I at gmail.com. So um, I hope you'll enjoy the lesson. Let's start. All right. So um, vertical projectile motion. So this is where we start with the definition what is vertical projectile motion first of all I want you to uh, notice that we will be talking about motion under the influence of gravitational force only so it means that gravitational force uh, would be the only force that would be acting on an object so uh, vertical because we're looking at one dimension only uh, that is uh, something objects that are either moving up or moving down all right so I just wanted us to quickly make an example so suppose I was throwing something upwards right and so it goes up and it comes back to the ground okay so there are several things that are going to take place so first of all I know that immediately when I let go of it it's going to go up but what happens to the speed of the object as it goes up the speed would actually decrease okay now what is that an indication of it's showing you why is the speed decreasing it's because there's a force that is constantly acting on this object so if they said draw a free body diagram showing forces that are acting on the object as it goes on its way up what force would we have it would be the force of gravity or the weight of the object right uh, so at any given point even when it gets here there's only one force that's acting and what is what is that force it's the force of gravity right uh, even when it gets to this point now think about this uh, uh, this is the maximum height this is the point at which the object would uh, actually stop momentarily but even when it has stopped there's still a force that's acting on it and which force is that it's the gravitational force so as a result anyway on the uh, um, uh, as as this uh, object travels um, it is experiencing a force of gravity okay so what is projectile motion we say these are uh, objects that are moving uh, under the influence of gravitational force only right now we've got four equations of motion and I'm going to write them down before we just head over to do some questions together right so we've got four equations of motion um, back in the days they used to call them laws of kinematics right so in this case uh, the first one just simply says VF is equals to VI plus A delta T right I'm going to explain a little bit more and the second one, that's VF squared, VI squared, plus 2 times A delta X or delta Y in our case because we are dealing with vertical motion. Okay. And the third equation, that's delta Y is equals to VI delta T plus 1 over 2 times A delta T squared. And then we also have the last one, okay, that's delta Y, okay, or delta X, uh, that's VI plus VF over 2, okay, and all of this is multiplied by the change in time. All right, so these are our four equations of motion, okay. Uh, I'm sure you've interacted with these uh, equations uh, in time past, okay, whether be it in grade 11 or, um, or even in grade 10. Now, 
I want us to quickly have a look at this. So it means that any time that we tackle a question on vertical projectile motion, we're simply going to have um, uh, use these four laws. And all of them are unique in a sense that um, there is one thing that's not there. For instance, if you look at the first one, okay, there is no displacement, delta Y or delta X. We don't have delta X here. In the second one, if you notice, there's no change in time, right? In the third one, notice there's no final velocity. And in the fourth one, it doesn't include uh, gravitational acceleration or any uh, or acceleration of any kind for that matter. Right, now, ladies and gents, I want you to always notice, when we talk about objects under the influence of gravitational force, gravity always pulls object downwards. It doesn't matter whether an object is going up or an object is going down. Just think about how weird it would be uh, if gravity were suddenly to pull object, uh, objects upwards, right? So objects are always moving under the influence or rather uh, um, uh, are always experiencing a force of gravity. That is, the earth is always pulling them towards their center, right? Towards its center, rather. Um, so as a result, we know that the value of gravitational force will always be vertically downwards. You see, once you understand that, um, it will make it easier for us to solve uh, uh, any question when it comes to equations of motion. Okay, right. Now, very quickly, uh, before um, we, we get into some questions. So now, the first thing that you're going to do any time that you um, tackle questions, right? You must keep in mind that there is gravitational acceleration and the value of gravitational acceleration is always 9.8 meters per second squared, right? Well, where does this value come from? Well, they actually tested it using uh, Newton's laws um, uh, um, of gravitational attraction. And we found that because the Earth is spherical, Right, the value of gravitational acceleration, or the average value, I should say, of gravitational acceleration is 9.8. So this is what we use, although it varies uh, from place to place, but we take this as the average. That's 9.8 meters per second squared. But please, the most important thing as well is to note its direction. That is, it always is downwards. So it doesn't matter whether the object is moving up or it's moving down, we know that it is experiencing a, an acceleration at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. Once you remember that, it always makes our working out quite easy. Okay, so I want us to quickly uh, just uh, consider a question um, together and uh, I want us to, to, to solve it together. Okay, right. All right, so um, I know this is a lot of writing, but uh, let's just try and do this question together, right? Uh, this is just a made-up question, and uh, then after that, we will try and tackle some past exam questions. Um, the whole reason why I want us to look at it is so that we can um, just grasp a few concepts that I want to uh, put across to you um, insofar as projectile motion is concerned. Now, let's look at this question together. They say Tembi throws a ball at 10 meters per second from the roof of a 30 meter building. On its way down, she fails to catch it, right? The ball continues to move until it reaches the ground. Ignore the effects of air resistance. Very important statement this, because this statement actually tells us that we are we have only gravitational uh, force that is acting so as a result we can uh, um, uh, conclude that it is moving under uh, or rather it is uh, obviously motion under the influence of gravitational force only now let's tackle this question together i always like to kind of paint a picture for myself uh, before i tackle any question so there it is. So we've got a, a building, all right? That's a 30 meter building. 
all right i'm gonna draw that so that's 30 meters okay and then there is our ball there okay so we throw the ball at 10 meters per second so we know it's thrown at 10 meters per second sorry about that that's 10 meters per second okay that's a 30 meter building so now what are we going to do we're going to throw it upwards so we're going to what's going to happen it's going to reach a maximum height somewhere right and thereafter only start falling downwards now we're not saying that um, you know it went all uh, i mean uh, it went all the way uh, you know horizontally that way but it's so that i can show the motion going up as well as the motion coming down so they said she throws the ball at 10 meters per second upwards right uh, um, uh, okay i think we should have specified vertically upwards so uh, vertically upwards right 10 meters second uh, ball at 10 meters per second yeah in fact the ball vertically upwards apologies about that vertically upwards right right you should have included that there right so uh, tembi throws a ball vertically upwards from the roof of a 30 meter building and then on its way down she fails to catch it she continue where the ball continues to move uh, until it reaches the ground now the first question that they ask us is calculate the maximum height above the ground right maximum height above the ground now what i also like doing is to just label my points if you don't mind i'm just going to label this as point a and then let's label the point uh, the maximum point that is a maximum height as b i'm going to also label this point where it comes back to the same position i'm going to label that position c and then i'm going to label the ground if you don't mind i'm going to label that as position d right now what are we trying to do okay so the first question says calculate the maximum height above the ground that the ball will reach so whenever you tackle a question on vertical projectile motion the very first thing please listen carefully ladies and gents the very first Thing that you're going to do is always choose a positive direction now it really doesn't matter whether you choose up or down as long as the examiner has not specified strictly for you you can choose any of the two so i'm going to take upwards motion as positive if you don't mind uh, you could have easily chosen downwards okay there's absolutely nothing wrong with that now okay so we want to know in this case right uh, we know upwards motion is positive right so it means downwards motion is negative so let's look at it so in this case we want the maximum height so do you agree we can find out right the displacement of the ball between position a and b so i'm going to take between position a and position b so in answering the first question i'm going to take position a and position b because that's my upward motion that resulted in um, that uh, maximum height there right so it means i'm going to consider my starting point as a i'm going to consider my final point as b so initial a uh, final at b so let's check what information do we have between a and b do we know what the initial velocity is okay right so our initial velocity we know at a the ball was moving at 10 meters per second upwards we considered up as positive so that's going to be positive 10 meters per second right and then do i know what the final velocity is that is do I know what the velocity at B is? Well, absolutely. We know that it's going to stop momentarily before it changes direction, isn't it? So at the maximum height, we know that our velocity is going to be zero 
meters per second it's going to stop so remember it's my chosen uh, uh, points a and b so that i can be able to answer that question adequately right and then do i know what gravitational acceleration is now of course um, we chose up as positive, but what do we know about gravity? Gravity is always acting vertically downwards. So as a result, I know that gravity will be minus a negative 9.8. Remember, ladies and gents, this is regardless of where the motion of the ball is. The reason why it's negative 9.8 is because of the choice that I've made to take upwards as positive and once you make that choice it does not change right so okay what about the time do i know the time that it took from point a to point b no we don't so i'm going to leave that open but what about the displacement that's exactly what we are looking for so in this case any equation that i choose must have displacement in it because i want to know uh, how far it traveled from A to B. Now, please consider, ladies and gents, what is displacement? Displacement is simply the straight line change in position from beginning to end point. So my beginning is A and my end point is at B. So a straight line change in position or the change in position in a straight line. And that's going to be very important later, right? So now let's check. So we said which equation am I going to pick now? Uh, now I know that I'm looking for displacement. What don't we have? Which variable don't we have? We don't have time. So I'm going to choose the only equation. In answering number uh, one, I'm going to choose the only equation without time. So let's check on our equations again. So which equation is that? That's going to be the second equation, isn't it? Right? So that's going to be Vf squared is equals to vi squared plus 2 times a delta y. I'm going to use delta y uh, because uh, that uh, shows me uh, that it's vertical motion. Right, so let's substitute. What's my final velocity? That's 0, okay? But remember, we squared that. Our initial point is going to be 10 squared. Please remember to put that in brackets. Uh, because it's very important. That's positive 10 squared. Um, the reason why I want to put it in brackets is that uh, someday you find that it's negative, and if you don't put that in brackets, then you forget to square the negative as well, right? Plus 2 times minus 9.8, so I'm substituting now. My acceleration value is minus 9.8, and then my displacement value, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Sorry about that. Right, my displacement value is simply going to be unknown. All right, so now let's do our mathematical gymnastics. Right, so that's positive 10. Okay, that's going to be a hundred. Two times minus 9.8, that's minus 19.6. That's delta y. Okay, and this is equal to zero. Of course, we're going to take that to the other side. In fact, let me take that whole thing. Um, if I take negative 19.6 to the other side, that's now 19.6 delta y, which is equals to 100. Okay, and we divide both sides by 19.6. Okay, and we seem to get an answer of, okay, delta y would be equals to 5.1 meters. And by the way, we get that value to be a positive value, right? So we get 5.1 meters as a positive value. What is it suggesting to us? That the ball was displaced upwards. And it's true, isn't it? It was displaced upwards between A and B. Okay? Right. However, have we answered the question? Remember, what was our question? They wanted to find out the maximum height above the ground, right? So the maximum height above the ground. So what are we going to do to get that maximum height above the ground? So we remember that, remember, um, 5.1 is the height above the roof of the house, right? But we want the maximum height above the ground. 
So it means we are taking the ground as our reference point. So as a result, that's going to be 30, right? We know that the height of the building is 30. And we know that the height from the roof of the house to the maximum height is 5.1. So it means, therefore, that the height will be equals to, we're going to take 30 being the height of the building plus 5.1, right? So therefore, it means that our actual height is going to be 35.1 meters. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Um, I tried to explain it to the best of my ability. Right, let's go to the next question. Right, um, so they say calculate the time taken from the moment it was thrown until it reached the ground. From the moment it was thrown, that is from position A until it got to position D. Now, please, uh, before we answer this question, let me just qualify something quickly. There's a common misconception that when we get to D, the final velocity is zero. Now, uh, that's not true because um, when we consider projectile motion, we say that we consider only motion under the influence of gravity, right? Of gravitational force. So that means that once it touches the ground, once the ball touches the ground, it no longer is under the influence of gravitational force only, right? Why is that? Because once it touches the ground, the ground exerts a force also upwards. So now you would actually have two forces, which means it's the gravitational force as well as the normal force or the force of impact uh, that the ground exerts on the ball. So um, what we mean when we say final velocity on the ground, we mean just moments before it actually touches the ground. Okay just when it is still above the ground, just moments before it touches the ground. So we just need to be careful every time that we answer questions uh, in relation to that. Okay. Right. I hope this is, uh, uh, that is clear. Right. Now let's go for the second question. Right. So we want to know the time taken from position A up until position D. Right. So let's look at the information that we have from A. So it means that from A till D, let's consider all our information or our variable, take our data, right? So that's initial velocity, right? So it means that I'm starting at A. What was my initial velocity, right? It's going to be positive 10. You've got that correct, right? We know that it was thrown upwards at 10 meters per second. But what about our final velocity? Oops, looks like our pen is kind of running out. Sorry about that. Right, so what about our final velocity, right? So in this case, we do not know what at what speed this thing was traveling. We don't know the velocity at that position, right? But what about gravitational acceleration? Once again, ladies and gents, it doesn't matter whether it was moving up or down. We simply know that gravitational acceleration always downwards. So as a result, that's going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared right okay what about our time okay so i'm just going to take that up a little bit so that you can see it all right um so uh, what about our gravitational uh, our time rather okay that's exactly what we're looking for right uh, that's what the question uh, um, wanted us to find so uh, but what about displacement in this case what would be the displacement of the object okay uh, in this case we're going to say all right it means that the displacement now notice this by definition what is displacement right straight line change in position from beginning okay to the end point okay so someone might say okay uh, but what about that point between a and b because i mean a and c because it went up and then went down now think about it so if it starts from this position here goes up and it comes back down what is the change in displacement here so the change in displacement would be zero so it means it would have traveled um, uh, so if you think about this it would have been 5.1 positive 5.1 right upwards minus 5.1 downwards 
So it means that the change in displacement between A and C would be zero. And then now we're saying from that position A to position D, what is the change in displacement? In a straight line, the change in displacement would be what? 30 meters, right? It would have been uh, 30 meters downwards. So as a result, that is going to be, oh, sorry, uh, we chose up as positive. So that means that uh, the change in displacement, 30 meters downwards, so that's minus 30. I hope uh, that makes perfect sense, right? Uh, let me just try to use another color to answer that question. So in this case, what are we going to say? We're going to say, right, we're looking for time, okay? Um, yeah, it's, you know, this is one of those questions uh, we're in. Uh, there are different ways of tackling it, by the way, but I'll, I'll show you that later on. Right, so in this case, what are we going to do? We're going to make sure that we simply say to ourselves, okay, uh, we want to find out what the time is. So any equation we take must have time in it, but what don't we have? We don't have final velocity, see? So we're going to say, all right, which equation does not have final velocity in it? Okay, there's our four equations once again. So I'm looking at the third equation. Can you see? Right, so I'm going to say um, ach, delta y is equals to vi delta t. Remember, you must write down the correct equation first, delta t squared, right? And then what do we now do? We're going to substitute, right? Okay, I'm just going to move that once again so that you can see it clearly. Okay, so we're going to say minus 30, right? I'm substituting all of my values is equals to our initial velocity. We said that was uh, 10, okay? We're looking for time, so that's delta T plus 1 over 2 times minus 9.8 Sorry, I'm going to squeeze that there, delta T squared, okay? Right, now let's try and uh, solve for that. By the way, physics is over here. So um, we just left with the mathematics part uh, to try and solve. So that's minus 30, right? That's 10 delta T. A half of 9.8 will give us 4.9 delta t squared. I hope you can see that we've got a quadratic equation, right? So uh, let's try and solve the quadratic ourselves. So this is going to be, um, uh, okay, let's try and, if we take that to the other side, that's 4.9 delta t squared, right? That's going to be minus 10 delta t. Think about it, if we take it to the other side, right? And then we're going to have minus 30 remaining there. And now this is equal to zero. Okay. Right. Now, what I'm simply going to do is, obviously, we can't factorize this. So what we're going to do is try to use the quadratic formula. So delta T would be equals to, uh, if you remember the quadratic formula, that's minus B plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, right, divided by 2a. Right, let's try and get to the right answer there. So that's minus, what is our b value, right? Okay, so that's minus a minus 10. So you must be very careful there. Plus minus the square root of, okay, our b squared, that's going to be minus... Uh, 10 squared minus 4 times our A value is 4.9 and our C value is um, uh, minus 30. Uh, sorry, I won't be able to squeeze all of that in there. So that's minus 4.9 and a minus 30. Okay, right. All of that, we're going to divide it by 2 times 4.9, okay? 
and then um, we're going to put that in the calculator now. Nah? All right. All right. Uh, so quickly, let's calculate that. Uh, so I have. All right. So we'll take both exponents. So that's minus and minus 10, which gives us. Uh, OK, a positive 10 plus the square root of you said that's going to be. Uh, 10 squared so that's minus 10 squared plus sorry that's minus uh, 4 times a so a is uh, uh, we said our a value is 4.9 and our c value is negative 30 Okay, divided by 2 times, so that's 2 times 4.9. Okay, right, I get a time value there of 3.69, 3.7, which we can say. So I get the first time value that I get is 3.7. Okay, let's say 3.7 seconds. Please, you can verify this with me, right? Or um, if we take that value and say, okay, mm, going to do the very same thing. I get a negative, so t is equal to 3.7, or t is equal to minus 1.66 seconds. Now, as much as we could wish, um, we can never have a negative time. Remember, uh, time is a scalar quantity, uh, and if we get negative time, it simply means we could go back in time, and as much as we wish, we could never have that. How I wish we could, hey? Um, so as a result, what would be our final answer? It means that the actual answer is 3.7 seconds. All right. I hope that is clear, right? Now let's look at the last question. Right, so what did we want to find uh, on that last question? So they said calculate the speed of the ball when it is 10 meters below the roof of the building, right? So they want to know what would be the speed. Remember, what's 10 meters below the roof, okay? What's 10 meters below the roof? So it means if this is the roof, want to know what would be the speed of the ball when we are 10 meters below. So it means at this point here, so the distance between those points that would be 10 meters right okay so I don't know what you want to call that point you can call it point P right so when it is at point P we want to know what would be the speed of the ball at point P so I'm just going to write that over here right want to know what would be the speed of the ball at point P right so now for a third question going to say all right um, you can choose and by the way uh, you you can you'd still be able to get to the correct answer by the way before we continue I just want to go back to this question if you found uh, what we did here a little bit tedious if you thought you know ugh, using quadratics you're not really uh, in favor of that you can actually uh, you could have actually found the final velocity first in fact, let me show it. Let me show it to you. You could have found the final velocity there, right? So we could have said, all right, let's find the final velocity. Okay. Um, we didn't have uh, uh, in this case the the time, right? We wanted the final velocity. So you could have used the second equation. V f squared is equals to v i squared plus two times a 
delta x. So I would have said, okay, what's our final velocity? Our final velocity uh, is unknown. That's what we're looking for, right? Uh, initial velocity, remember that was 10. So positive 10, we square it, plus 2 times a, that's minus 9.8. Uh, our delta x, remember, we said that was minus 30, right? And then, of course, vf would now be the square root of that value, which is 10 squared. Um, I'm just going to quickly throw it in the calculator, right? I'm going to say the square root of um, uh, 10 squared plus, or rather, Uh, plus 2 times 9, uh, sorry, uh, negative 9.8 uh, times a negative 30, okay? And I get 26, so that would have been 100 plus 2 times 9.8 times negative 30, sorry, that's negative 9.8 times negative 30, and then we've got 26.22. Now you just need to be a little bit careful here, because your final velocity at D is motion going downwards. And remember, whenever you take a square root, you've got two possibilities. You've got uh, a plus or a minus. So it means that your final velocity would have been, why would it? Would I have taken the negative value? Because remember, at D, it was actually going downwards. You must always keep that in mind, right? So that's minus 26.22. And then I could use, remember, we were still looking for time. Ne? So I could have used Vf is equals to Vi plus A delta T. So what is my Vf value? Uh, that's minus 26.22. My initial value uh, was positive 10 plus a negative 9.8 delta T. Now, obviously, we're going to try and solve all of that, right? If I take this to the other side, it becomes negative. So I've got um, negative 26.66 minus 10 okay that's the value i get there and i divide that value by a negative okay uh, did i do something wrong okay so that's minus 20 uh, minus 26.22 sorry about that so that's minus 10 okay um, okay, and then we get, we divide that by negative 9.8, okay? All right, and guess what you see there? That your time is still, it's still 3.69, 3.7 seconds. So it doesn't matter. If, if, if you tackled it this way, if you found that a little bit... Um, uh, tedious, uh, that's still okay. You could have actually tackled it this way. It's still the same thing. Okay, right. Now let's go to the next question. All right, let's go to the next question. And now we say, okay, we wanted to find out, remember, the speed of the ball when it is 10 meters below the roof of the building. And you remember, we said 10 meters below is at this point here. Now, you could have done this several ways, okay? You could have said, all right, in my case, what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to take um, information from A till P, okay? So I'm going to take information from A till P, right? So, or you could have, you could have taken information from B till P. Let me just show you. If I took A from A till P, what would be my initial velocity? Right? Initial velocity at A, you'd say to me, okay, it was thrown vertically upwards. 
So that would be positive 10. Final velocity is unknown to me. Gravitational acceleration, minus 9.8. Remember, it doesn't change, right? Time, I don't know what that time is. But what would be my displacement between A and P? Once again, straight line change in position from the beginning to the end point. A straight line change in position from beginning to end point. So in this case, it would be what? 10 meters downwards. So as a result, that would be minus 10 meters. Remember, that's meters per second, right? So which equation would I use between A and P? I'd say, look, I'm looking for... Um, uh, I'm looking for the speed, right? So it means I'm looking for that final velocity there. I don't have time. So in this case, I would say Vf squared is equals to Vi squared plus 2 times A delta X or delta Y, okay? Right. Then I'd say, okay, um, we're looking for final velocity. Okay. In fact, let's just say Vf is equals to the square root of, now let's substitute there, initial velocity, that's positive 10 squared plus 2 times minus 9.8 multiplied by our delta y, which is minus 10. So let's do that quickly. The square root of um, 10 squared, it's positive, plus 2 times a negative 9.8 times a negative 10. Okay. And I seem to get a value there. 17.2. Now, please keep in mind once again, when you take the square root, you've got two possible answers, plus or minus. So at P, where was it moving? Definitely downwards, isn't it? So as a result... It means that that velocity there should be negative. And this becomes very crucially important when you are going to draw graphs of motion. Uh, we're not going to do that today, um, but it is very important. So it means it was moving at 17.2 meters per second in which direction it was downwards. Okay, so... Uh, in this case, because they were looking for speed, we didn't necessarily need to specify the direction. I hope that's clear, ladies and gents. Right, just an alternative way. I'm just trying to show you what you also could have done. Right, just look at this. I could have also taken information from B to P. Look at that. I'm not going to make the calculation, but I'm trying to show you the, uh, the, the, the information. What would be our initial velocity? If I started at B, I ended at P. What would we have done? We would have said, okay, starting from B, right? What is my velocity at B? It's zero meters per second, right? Remember, that's our maximum height. We said at maximum height, it stops momentarily, okay? What about our final velocity? Well, what would be the velocity? That's what we would have been looking for, G. Gravitational acceleration, that's minus 9.8. Remember, we chose down, uh, I mean, we chose upwards as positive. Gravity x downwards. What's our time? We don't know either. But what is the displacement between B and P? Remember that we found that the distance between A and B was 5.1 in our very first question. Found that it was 5.1. So meaning from B to C, it would still be 5.1. And you add to that another 10 meters, so that would be 15.1. So it means that your displacement is 15.1 in which direction? Downwards. So it means that you'd say this is minus 15.1. And the reason why it's negative, uh, remember we chose up as positive, so it means downwards would be negative. I hope that is absolutely clear, ladies and gents. I know it seems like a lot of writing, uh, but I hope you, you get the gist of the question. All right. So I want us to quickly move on to another question. Uh, this time I'm going to take a past exam question. All right. Right. 
All right, here's a question uh, on vertical projectile motion uh, from one of the past exam question papers uh, that's in paper one. Uh, sorry that it's, uh, it's in such small print. I was trying to make it fit, but I think I made it too small. Um, but what I'll do is I'll narrate the question and I'll actually redraw the sketch so that we can sort of get, a, get the gist of what we're doing. Okay. Uh, so, they say a ball A is thrown vertically upwards, so we actually have uh, balls A and B, right? So first of all, they tell us we've got ball A, so there's ball A, tell us it's thrown vertically upwards, okay? Uh, and it seems to be at 15 meters per second. Okay, so there's ball A. And then uh, they say we've got ball A, which is thrown vertically upwards at a height of H. So we don't know the height of the building or of the place where we are throwing it from, right, which is H. Okay. They say with a speed of 15 meters per second, full stop. At the same time, a second ball, uh, a second identical ball B is dropped from the same height as ball A. So we've got another ball B from the same height, but this time we are dropping it. Now, ladies and gents, please note, when we use certain words in physics, like the word drop, we are simply suggesting that we were actually holding this thing steady and still, right? And what did we do? We simply let go of it. So what does that suggest about ball B? It means ball B started with a velocity of zero meters per second. Hopefully that's going to make sense as we answer the question right and then what happens in this case so they say um, as shown that as shown in the diagram below both balls undergo free fall right and eventually hit the ground so it means that ball a will actually go through that motion where it goes up and then comes back down and then ball b Remember that it simply goes downwards, so it takes vertical motion, whereas, I mean, uh, vertical motion downwards, whereas ball A starts by going up and then starts going down thereafter. I hope that makes sense, right? So, um, they say they undergo free fall. Now, they say explain the term. Uh, free fall, right? So uh, when we explain free fall and um, uh, we, we understand that it's motion that's only influenced by gravitational force. So in this case, um, to, quite honestly, I don't like the term free fall, but uh, nonetheless, what can we say? Um, um, because it, it makes it sound like it's things that are or it's objects that are actually going vertically downwards, but uh, free fall is actually motion under uh, gravitational force only, right? So um, let's go for the second question. In 1.2, they say calculate the time it takes for ball A to return to its starting point. So let's take the motion of A. Let's label those points. Let's we'll label them in a different color. Let's call that point P where it starts. Let's say point Q, that maximum point. Let's say point R when it returns to the same point again. And let's say PQR S. Let's call that point S. Ne? All right, the point where it lands on the ground. Okay, right. So we're looking at PQR and S. Now they say calculate the time it takes for ball A to return to its starting point. So meaning to return to this point here, which is uh, R, right? P and R are exactly the same point, but the ball was doing something different at point P, 
it was going up and at point R it was going down. Now, I'm going to take motion from P to R, okay? Right? Um, I'm going to say, well, what is my initial velocity? Now, ladies and gents, there's what we call, uh, point P and R is what we call a time symmetry, meaning that there are several things that we know about point P and point R, if it is to be the same point, right? That the velocity with which ball A leaves point P and, uh, uh, or rather, let me rather say the speed with which ball A leaves point P is the same as the speed with which A returns to point R. Why? Because it is exactly the same point. Something else that we know is that the time that it takes from P to R should be the same as the time that it takes from Q. No, no, no. Uh, the time it takes, rather, from P to Q should be the same as the time that it takes from Q to R. Okay, I hope that's clear, right? And then thirdly, what do we know? We know that the distance, I mean, that makes sense, isn't it? The distance from P to Q should be the same as the distance from Q to R. So now, with that said, let's just consider the information. Let's take our data between P and R. P is our starting point, R is our end point. So initial velocity, that is at P. By the way, we needed to choose direction as positive. You know what, for the sake of it, let's just take downwards as positive. I wanna show you that uh, applying this, um, clearly my pens are failing me now. Right, let's take downwards as positive, right? I'm gonna take downwards as positive. You could have taken up as positive, no issues, all right? So, initial velocity, what is my initial velocity? Remember, uh, ball A started going up at 15 meters per second, so upwards should be negative 15 meters per second. I hope that's clear, right? What about our final velocity, right? When it came back at point R, that's our end point, right? We said the velocity or the speed at P should be the same as the speed at R. It should still be 15 meters per second, but what's the difference now? It's positive because it, uh, it was moving downwards, okay? That's 15 meters per second. What about gravitational acceleration? Now we chose downwards as positive, and we know gravity always acts downwards, so we're going to say that's going to be positive 9.8. Gravity always acts downwards, isn't it? So, what about the time? So, time that it takes between the two points, that's exactly what we want. Okay, they said calculate the time. And what about the displacement? Look at this. I want you to please note this. We start at this position and we end at the same position. Whenever we've got a time symmetry like this, it means that, look at this, it went a certain distance upwards and then went the same distance downwards. It means the change in position is actually zero. So there's been a zero change in position. The displacement is zero. Okay? Right. Now you might want to say, well, but that makes it seem like it didn't do anything. By definition, what did we say displacement is? It's a change in position in a straight line. So as a result, that means that A did not experience a change in position between uh, P and R. Okay, I hope that is clear. Right. Now, let's find which equation are we going to use. Okay. Right. I'm going to use the easiest equation. I see that I've got all of those. So, uh, VF is VI plus A delta T. Right. Um, so, our final velocity, we said it's positive 15. Initial velocity, that's minus 15 plus a positive 9,8 delta T. Right, let's do our mathematics. Take that to the other side, it becomes positive. So 15 plus 15, that would give us 30, is equals to 9.8 delta T. Right, so um, what's our value for? we divide both sides by 
9.8 okay so uh, in this case we're going to have delta t they t divide by 9.8 that's going to be 3.06 seconds so it means that the time that it took between position a and position i mean uh, position p and r would have been 3.06 seconds now someone else might have uh, preferred to tackle this differently they would have said, well, let me take data between P and Q, right? So if I take uh, data between position P and Q, I would have said, all right, look at this. Nothing wrong with that. All that we would have done is to take between P and Q, from P to Q, whatever time I get between uh, uh, P and Q would be the same time between Q and R. So I just simply can multiply it by two. So someone else could have said, well, I'm taking initial velocity uh, as um, minus 15, right? Sorry about that. Final velocity. Please note, I'm just answering the same question in a different way. I won't go all the way um, to finding the solution. So what would be my final velocity? Remember, it stops momentarily, right? So... Uh, gravitational acceleration that's minus 9.8 uh, sorry positive 9.8 sorry about that we chose downwards as positive that still is going downwards please note the gravitational acceleration value never changes um, its sign depends on your choice of a, a positive direction so um, if you notice the change in time is unknown and what would be the displacement? It would still be unknown between those two points. So in that case, you would have found the time and then just simply multiply that by two. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Right, let's go to the next question. Okay, let's go to the next question. So the next question says to you, um, calculate the distance between ball A and ball B when ball A is at its maximum height. So they want the distance between ball A and ball B, right? Now, I want you to think about this. I want to illustrate this to you. The moment we started throwing ball A, remember we dropped ball B. So what happened? As this one went up, this one went down. So we're going to freeze that moment there when A reaches its maximum height. Notice B would not have been at its original point. Can you see that? Ne? Right. So the moment I released A upwards, B also simultaneously, right? It started moving downwards. So we want to know when this one reached its maximum height, how far would this one have been and what would be the distance note the distance between the two i want you to keep that in mind okay right so now what do we need to do let's find out how far did ball a travel between p and q right so how far is ball a between p and q so uh, remember that's our information between p and q we already found that information there, right? We are looking for, uh, oh no, sorry. Uh, we found the information there between P and Q. We said that's minus 15, that's zero. So we're looking for the displacement, right? So I'm going to take the second equation, right? Let me just put that there. Uh, let's just make a line there, all right? I hope it's still visible. Okay, so um, um, so what I'm going to do is let me calculate the time that it takes uh, uh, um, between P, uh, the, sorry, the distance between, uh, am I still doing the right thing? Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Right, so um, in fact, let me just 
fill in that information between P and Q once again. Right, we said initial velocity, that's minus 15 because it went up. Final velocity, that is zero. Gravitational acceleration, that's positive 9.8 meters per second squared. The time that it takes. Now, please note, we already found the time that it took uh, from uh, 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 P to R. And we know from P to Q, it would be half that time. So I'm just going to divide that by 2, um, getting 1.53, right? So I know it would have taken me 1.53 seconds, all right, to get from P to Q. And then we are looking for displacement. Now, there's a reason why I'm specifying that 1.53. Now, we're looking for the displacement between P and Q. I'm going to say, all right, so that's... Um, which equation of motion should I use? Okay, I can use the third one. Uh, in fact, you know what? Let me use even the fourth one. Delta Y, that's VI plus VF over 2 times the change in time. Right, you could have gone for the second one. Uh, that would have worked just as well. Okay, so final veloc initial velocity minus 15 plus 0, okay, divided by 2, and we're going to multiply that by 1.53, multiply it by 1.53, okay, minus 15 plus 0, that gives us minus 15, divided by 2, that gives us minus 7.5, so minus 7.5, times 1.53 and that gives us minus 11.48 meters okay we could have tackled this differently why do we get a negative answer because it was displaced upwards okay it went up 11.48 uh, 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 meters now, what do we want to find? We want to find out the distance between A and B at that position. Now, let's find out what distance did B travel. So this is information that had to do with A. What distance did B travel within the same time? Because remember, if it took A 1.43 seconds, uh, sorry, 1.53 seconds to get there. want to know what distance would B have traveled during the same time, right? So what is our information for B? What is our data? So initial velocity, that's going to be zero. A final velocity, that would be unknown, right? It would be at some random position X, if you want to call it that, right? G, that's minus 9.8. The change in time, that's 1.53. Because I want to know at that 1.53 seconds, how far is B, right? And then the displacement, that's exactly what we are looking for. Now, we're looking for the displacement. We don't have final velocity. So I'm going to use the... I'm going to use the second equation, right? I mean the, the third equation, I think. So that's delta y is equals to uh, vi delta t plus 1 over 2 times a delta t squared. Okay? Right. Now, please note in this case, what's our initial velocity again? That's going to be 0. Okay, zero multiplied by anything is zero. So it makes this whole term become zero. So that's half. That's positive. Uh, why did we say negative there? Sorry about that again. So remember, we chose down as positive. So it means that uh, gravitational acceleration is still maintained as positive 9.8. So that's positive 9.8. And what's our time? That's 1.53, but remember it is squared. We're looking for that displacement there. And 
what do we get? Okay, so that's going to be 0 0.5 times 9.8 times 1.53 squared. Okay, right, I get a value of 11.47. Please note, coincidentally, these values are almost similar. Please, I want you to note something that... Um, when you look at uh, that value, it comes out positive. Why? Because it's telling you downwards motion is actually positive. So it, it was displaced. B was displaced downwards, whereas A was displaced upwards. Now, the question that we had, the question in hand, said calculate the distance. Note the distance, not the displacement, the distance. Now, think about it. The one ball went up and the other ball went down. So obviously, if the one went, okay, so here's our reference point. The one ball went up 11.47, uh, sorry, 11.48. The other one from this reference point went down 11.47 meters, okay? So... What do we realize in this case? If the other one went up, the other one went down, what is the total distance between them, right? So the total distance would actually be that entire thing there. So what do we do? Do we add those numbers or subtract them? Definitely we are going to add them. Now, you might want to say to me, ah, oh, but what, what about the other number being negative? Look, at the end of the day, we're looking for the distance that showed us the displacement. It means it's showing us how far it went and its direction. So that distance, that negative, simply tells us about direction. So in this case, we're simply going to say, okay, uh, the, the distance between A and B, okay, is going to be 11.48 plus 11.47, okay? 9.48 and what do we get that's going to be 22.95 meters okay i hope that makes perfect sense right now the last question uh, in this particular section right they say sketch a velocity time graph okay i know i haven't gone through graphs with you Please look out for another video on uh, projectile motion. I'll be tackling questions that specifically deal with uh, graph questions, okay? Uh, graphs on uh, projectile motion. They say sketch a velocity time graph in the answer book for the following, uh, for, sorry, for the motion of ball A from the time it is projected until it hits the ground. Clearly show the following on your graph. now. The velocity time graph will always, in this case, be a straight line, okay? And the reason for that is that there's a proportional, directly proportional relationship between velocity and time. So I'm going, I'm going to just draw that, okay? Right, because velocity is a vector, I'm going to show both the positive and the negative side, okay? Right, now I want you to think about it. We're drawing a graph for ball A. What happened to ball A right at the beginning? It started with a velocity of what? Of negative 15, right? So that's going to be negative 15, okay? So it would have started with a, a velocity of negative 15. And then as time went, the velocity came to a stop. So it's a straight line graph, okay? So it would have stopped at some point. So you get a graph that looks like this. Now, please, I want you to note, it started at negative 15. It stopped at what time did it stop? Remember, that's when we reached that maximum height. We found out that time was 1,53 seconds. Are you with me? So that is time in seconds. This is going to be velocity 
and the SI units is meters per second. Okay, so the time is in seconds, the velocity is in meters per second. Now, um, we want to say, okay, so um, did we know the final velocity when it reached? Okay, so they said we should show the initial velocity, the time it takes to reach its maximum uh, height, the time it takes to return to its starting position. So it's this time here, which is going to be 3.06. So those are the three sets of data that they would have wanted us to have. So the velocity time is a straight line graph. Um, obviously because velocity is directly proportional to time. You can check that from the fact that Vf is equals to Vi plus A delta T. If you just take this uh, backwards, right? So Vf, if I just consider, just for argument's sake, that initial velocity is, is zero, okay? So I'm going to have A delta T. Now look at this. This is V is equals to A, which is a constant multiplied by time. So if I've got a constant, just think of Y is equals to MX. What type of a graph is that? It's a straight line graph. Why? Because Y is directly proportional to X. And why do we say it's directly proportional? Because next to the equal sign, there's a constant there, all right, uh, which is M. In this case, V is directly proportional to T. Why? Because next to the equal sign, there's a constant. And what is our constant? It's 9.8, isn't it? So velocity is directly proportional to time. That's another story for another day, right? So this is what our graph would look like. I hope uh, that makes perfect sense, right? We are covering just one last question and we are calling it a day. All right, uh, I hope that previous question, uh, you found it quite interesting. All right, so we're doing this last question. Um, and remember, our last video, or, or rather our next video, will be on graphs that are based on vertical projectile motion. Right, now let's have a look at this. Uh, um, I sourced this from a previous question paper as well. Uh, and it says an object is released from rest at point X. Sorry, once again, it's uh, quite small, but I'm going to redraw that drawing. Okay, so they release an object from point X. So there are actually three points. That's one, two, and three. And I'm going to illustrate them as I go, right? So an object is released, okay, from rest. So they are telling us this object was at rest. So I know that at this point here, my velocity is zero meters per second, okay? Uh, so that's point X, that's right here. Okay, as shown in the diagram below, it travels 30 meters from B to C. So meaning that, um, we released it from rest, but now B is over here and C is over there. And they said the distance between B and C is 30 meters. All right. And then, um, sorry uh, if this thing keeps moving. Right. So now they tell us it travels uh, 30 meters from B to C in 1.5 seconds. So it means that the time that it takes between B and C is 1.5 seconds. Let me just write it over the side. So that's 1.5 seconds. All right. And then they say uh, before hitting the ground and then ignore the effects of air friction. So they're trying to tell us that we should consider this as um, a projectile motion of free fall. Right, now let's have a look at it quickly. Right, they say name the type of motion described above. You can say free fall or you can say uh, projectile motion, right? So 2.2, uh, they say calculate the magnitude of the velocity of the object at point B, right? So we want to know what is the magnitude of the 
um, uh, uh, of the object at point B. Right, now, here's the issue. If I started at X to B, I would know what the initial velocity is, but um, I, it, so that means that I'd be looking for final velocity. But here's my point. Uh, I don't have any more information about X to B uh, except for that initial velocity and the fact that there's acceleration of 9.8. So I'm going to take downwards as positive once again, right? I'm going to take downwards as positive. So now 2.2.1, I say calculate the velocity of the object at point B. So let me take information between B and C. How about that? So between B to C, help me out. What's my initial velocity? That starting at B, I don't know what it is. Final velocity, that is at C just before, just moments before it hits the ground. I don't know what it is either. So, um, gravitational acceleration, that's positive 9.8. Why is it positive? Because I've chosen downwards as positive and gravitational acceleration always acts downwards. Okay, what's the time between B and C? Well, they told us it's 1.5 seconds. And again, what is the displacement between B and C? It is displaced 30 meters downwards. So it's going to be positive 30 because it's downwards. Okay, right. Now, what are we looking for? We're looking for initial velocity, right? Because they want the velocity at B. So the velocity at B, that's our starting point. We don't have final velocity, so which is the only equation without final velocity. That's going to be the third one. Okay, so that's delta Y is equals to VI. So that's VI delta T plus 1 over 2 A delta T squared. Okay. Right, what is our delta T, uh, I mean delta Y? That's 30. We want initial velocity. What is our time? That's 1.5 seconds plus 1 over 2. Our acceleration value, that's 9.8. And what is our time value? That's 1.5 second squared. So that's 30 which is equals to 1.5 VI plus half of 0 0.5 times 9.8 times 1.5 squared. That gives us 11.025, okay? If I take that to the other side, okay, I'll have minus 30. Uh, if I take that to the other side, 30 minus 11.25, that gives me 18.975. I really don't want, don't like wasting time on this. Okay, right, so divide both sides by 1.5. Okay, right, divide both sides by 1.5. Oh. That cancels with that. I'm just going to write it on the other side. So what's my VI value? Okay. I get a value of 12, sorry, 12.65 meters per second. So it means the velocity at B, uh, by the way, that's a positive value. So it's telling me it must have been going downwards, isn't it? So it's going to be my velocity at B. They said velocity, which means we must include direction. So velocity at B was equal to 12.65 meters per second. In which direction? It must have been downwards. Okay, right. So quickly, um, let's go to 2.2.2. Right, I hope that makes sense to everyone. So that's 2.2.2. They say calculate the height of point X 
above the ground. So we want to know how far is point X from the ground. Now you could have chosen to do this in several ways. All right. I'm going to take X to B so that I, I can get that displacement there. And then I'm going to add it to that 30 to get the height above the ground. I'm sure that makes sense, right? So it means that I'm going to say, all right, uh, from X till B, what is my information? Initial velocity at X. You remember that we started from rest, okay? We started from rest, right? So that's zero. And then what about my final velocity? When I get to B, what would be my velocity at B? Remember, it's the one that we just found there, which is 12.65 meters per second. It's positive because it's going downwards. What about our, gravi Sorry, our gravitational acceleration? That's 9.8 meters per second squared, right? Positive, why is it positive? Because we chose down as positive. Do we know the time it took? No, we don't. But do we know the displacement between X and B? No, we do not. That's what we're looking for, right? So in this case, we don't have time. We're looking for displacement. So I'm just going to uh, calculate it over here. So VF squared, that's VI squared plus two times A, delta X, okay? So we're going to say, all right, for the final velocity, um, uh, okay, uh, sorry, let's just write that as delta Y so that we are consistent. Right, so final velocity, that's going to be 12.65. Uh, Remember, it's positive, that's squared. Initial velocity, we said that's zero squared plus two times our a value that's 9.8 delta y okay so in this case um, we'll have 19.6 delta y on this side and 12.65 ah oh man 12.65 squared um, that gives us 160 all right, and divide that by 19.6. Okay, so that was 160 point dot dot dot, divide that by 19.6. And we find that our displacement value, right, is 8.16 meters now remember we haven't answered the question just yet they said to us after hitting the ground the object bounces or, or rather they, they were looking for height rather at point x above the ground so want to know how far is that point x there we found out it's 12 sorry it's 8.16 meters from b but we want to know how far it is above the ground so we know this distance here is 12 uh, sorry 8.65 sorry for that clumsiness there 8.65 so we want to know what is the entire distance there okay right so now we're simply going to say um uh what is our height this is simply going to be 8.16 plus 30 and this is going to be 38.16 meters all right so we leave it there ladies and gents uh, thank you so much uh, for the time and uh, we'll do this again another time